The following is a live presentation of Retro Sports Network, home of the champions of the past, present, and or future. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Ron Jekyll. Welcome to the program for this 24th day of February, the first day of baseball, spring training. Yay! 2023, it is a cold day here in Burlington. It is a hot night in Atlanta, where we are going to be for tonight's game, May 18th. It's a Friday night in the in the big city as the Atlanta Braves take on the San Francisco Giants. The Atlanta Braves are going to go with Greg Maddox, who was... Well, ERA-wise, he's fine, but if he's going to win 17 games, he's got to get on the stick. He's 2-3 and three in this replay so far. The Braves, in fact, are 18-23. and 23. The good news is that Florida, New York, and Philadelphia are starting to struggle ahead of them, and so things aren't as dire for the Braves as they were, oh, let's say a week or two ago, but their work is still cut out, and again, they're under 500. San Francisco is doing pretty well. They're 25 and 15, game 41 from them. They're at the quarter pole. Atlanta game 42. It is Mark Gardner, sorry Dave, on the hill for San Francisco. He has pitched very well. And of course, the giant offense is loaded. Today you get Barry Bonds and Jeff Kent back to back in the lineup. So we're a little bit late because we're trying to coordinate several things at the same time, but you're getting baseball at lunch on a Friday right here, right now. As Retro Sports Network presents 2001, a season odyssey. Today, today from Turner Field in Atlanta, Georgia, it is the Atlanta Braves and the San Francisco Giants. And today's game is brought to you by... DigitalDice.com, the best darn podcast on the web for your sports simulation and replay needs. Find us today on Spotify, Spreaker, iTunes, or wherever else fine podcasts are listed. And we are taping tomorrow, or Friday, I don't know why I keep hitting don't ask, don't ask me this again because it will. Dog Days Dice, how are you? Grew up going to the Turner, taking you back. Mad Dog on the mound. Pretty much why I picked it. Maddox is one of my all-time favorites. Greg is 35 years old, making his ninth start of the year, two and three. He's with a whip of 1099, so it's not like he's stinking up the joint. An extreme ground ball pitcher. He features the change, and Bugs Bunny loves his fastball at 82. His last start was against the Dodgers five nights ago, an eight-inning 3-1 masterpiece where he he did his job for eight innings, shutting down the Dodgers. On a walk and four strikeouts, 96 pitches. Good morning from Vegas, Bernie. Would I take Pedro over Mad Dog? It depends on the... For, uh, overall, hmm, interesting question. 53 and two-thirds from Maddox, 52 hits, 21 runs, 19 earned, four homers, seven walks, and 45 strikeouts, 24th in the National League in Ks. For peak, I would take Pedro. For longevity, I would take Maddox, although even Pedro at the end of his career was better than 90% of the pitchers that were in baseball at that particular time. Just even look at his Game 5 performance in the 2009 World Series. Pedro in 98, 99, two th you know, I think Pedro's peak is equal to Koufax's, to be honest. Marvin Bernard, by the way, will lead off for San Francisco. Rich Aurelia at short will bat second. Barry Bonds in left will go third. Jeff Kent cleans up at second base. Rios will dance in the sand in right field and bat fifth. Benito Santiago behind the plate goes sixth. J.T. Snow at first batting seventh. Russ Davis at third batting eighth and Mark Gardner on the mound will bat ninth. How you doing? Pesky Paul doing some 54 replaying. What team are you doing there? Yeah, I think what Pedro did in the steroid era is pretty wild. You look at those numbers from 2000, and it's the second best ERA plus in baseball history. 
So we set the Braves defense for you. B.J. Surhoff, a four and a four in left. Andrew Jones, a ten and a six in center. Brian Jordan is a seven and a good arm in right. Chipper is a three at third. Raphael Furcall is a five at short. The Q, QV Varis, a six at second. Rico Suave Bronia, a four at first. Paul Bacco, Mr. Maddox's personal catcher, a four and a five. And Greg, worthy of those gold gloves, a 10 on the mound with a 986 fielding percentage. How you doing? Tape saturated. Nice to have you along. Marvin Bernard steps in at 177. Three homers and 13 RBI. The thing with Maddox is that he really didn't like Mo Rivera. You knew what was coming. Slow and threw a thim threw a pinhole. How you doing, Mike from the truck? Maddox starts this one with a ground ball to for call over to first, and it's a late play for call. Got a late jump, and Marvin's on with a single. You never want the 177 hitter to reach with an infield hit. Mike is playing with the Giants. Willie Mays is your father's boyhood hero. That's why I love these games. In a way, I can get in that time machine and watch my dad's hero play. If you ever are here when Brad is here, his dad's favorite player was Ted Klazuski, and that's why he is Big Clue 18. I certainly get it. Rich Aurelia at 286, two homers and 10 RBI. I lightened up the Giants' background, so hopefully it makes it easier for you to see. Maddox pitch in the left field. That ball is well struck, and Hot Lana comes into play as it's 2 nothing before Skip Carey can get the first Andy Griffith reference out of the way. Goodness gracious, Buffy St. Marie. So 2 nothing Giants. Right off the bat, Kluziski homered twice in Hank Aaron's debut in opening day. Wow. You could actually do Aaron's career replay in, in re, replay because they have every season for that. So Maddox hasn't retired a batter. It's 2 nothing San Francisco. And here's Bonds at 298, 15 homers and 28 RBI. In a game I played last night in another engine, his name is Y.A. Can you tell me why? And Barry draws the walk, so Maddox off like a herd of thundering turtles. And here's Jeff Kent, 284, 5 homers, and 26 RBI. Got him! So there's finally one out. A 74-mile-an-hour changeup swung on and missed. And one out for Armando Rios. Hitting behind Bonds and Kent. That's kind of like being Jim Brady behind Marsha and Greg, you know? Armando at 228. Seven homers and 21 RBI. Same with Mays. Do they go back to 51 now? Actually, Willie'd served some time in Korea. Pitch to Rios. High ground ball foul for his base side, and somebody at APA headquarters made that catch. So a ball and two strikes, and Maddox has already thrown 22 pitches and only has one out. Got him. That's two. He swung on and missed the 81-mile-an-hour change, and that'll bring up Benito Santiago at 301, no homers, and 11 RBI. So Maddox kind of scuffling his way through the start. That's Tavares, and Cuvio goes over to first, and that will retire the side. But Rich Aurelia, a bang, bang home run in the left center, two runs, two hits, and no errors. We go to the bottom of the first at San Francisco 2, Atlanta nothing. And they tell me this is not Dave Gardner. And you don't call Dave Gardner Guardy. Mark Gardner, making his sixth start of the year, is 5-1 and one with an earned run average of 297. He is 39 years old, a fastball pitcher at 84, and a flyball pitcher. Let's ask Dave how old he was. He wouldn't have been 39 because I turned 30 that year, and he's not that much older than I am. 
So his last start came against the Mets seven days ago. A 4 nothing shutout. He won eight. 104 pitches, six hits, two walks, and four strikeouts. So Gardner, 36 of the third, 27 hits, 12 runs, all earned. Six homers allowed, 10 walks, 22 strikeouts. Ah, you bought it during the last sale. 51's an intriguing season. Here's how the Braves line up. QB Overis leads off for Atlanta. It'll be Andrew Jones in center batting second. Chipper bats third and plays third. Jordan in right cleans up. Sounds like a high school combination I knew. Surhoff in left will bat fifth. Furcall at short will go sixth. Rico Bronia at first will bat seventh. Paul Bacco behind the plate goes eighth. And Greg Maddox, who threw a whopping 27 pitches in the first. I think he threw a complete game once on 27 pitches. Will bat ninth defensively for San Francisco. Barry Bonds a four and a six in left. Marvin Bernard a five and a four in center. Alex Rios an eight and a nine in right. Russ Davis a three at third. Rich Aurelia six at short. Jeff Kent a seven at second. J.T. Snow a six at first. Benito Santiago a five and a five behind the plate. And Gardner is a seven on the mound with a 1,000 fielding percentage. Varis at 216, two homers and 14 RBI. Varis pops it up left side, Aurelia on the grass, one out. It is raining in Atlanta, 82 degrees on this 18th day of May. It would be the Preakness weekend coming up. So they ran the 2001 Black Eyed Susan on this date. Winds blowing from right to left at three. On a warm night from the launching pad. And Rich Aurelia has brought his own Roman candle with that two-run homer in the first. Andrew Jones at 235, nine homers and 22 RBI. Left side, Davis. Two out. For Chipper Jones at 300. Chipper's a coach this year for the Braves, right? Seven homers and 26 RBI. Guardy's pitch, and he walked him. For Brian Jordan, Brian at 257, five homers and 20 RBI. In the right field, Rios has it. Net will retire the side. No runs to hit. The Braves leave on a runner. We go to the second here. Two nothing Giants. So Snow, Davis, and Gardner to face Maddox in the second. JT at 238. Two homers and 21 RBI. I, I'm thinking next week we're back to our Tuesday night, Wednesday, and Thursday lunchtime schedules. Snow walked. So, Greg Maddox not putting this one down in the Baseball Digest Annals. Here's Davis, 242, three homers, and 11 RBI. He could use a ground ball right now. For call, he might get it. Varis for a one. And gone with the wind is next. He got the double play, 6-4-3. That's the Greg Maddox you know and love right there. So two out for Gardner, who is 0 for 12 with eight strikeouts. Maddox from the wind, and there's a fly ball that's going to hook foul left field. And somebody that works at Coke down the street made the catch. It's an 0-2 count. Little chopper to first. Bronia is going to underhand it to Maddox. And that will retire the side. So an easier inning for Maddox. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the bottom of the second here. 2 nothing San Francisco. So Surhoff for Call and Bronia to face Gardner. BJ at 250. Oh, we finally have a picture for BJ. I didn't change anything. Five homers and 17 RBI. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Disregard what Gardner said. Hold on one second. Ah. Oh, Mr. Gardner. Oh, Mr. Gardner. The stream got a real chuckle out of your message, period. Ah, anyway. So nobody out here, sir, off. Gardner starts the inning with a base hit up the middle. Bernard will pick it up. And so that's the first hit for the Braves. Here's for Cole. At 253 homers and 14 RBI. Suroff is good speed. Let's see what we do. Pitch to Raphael. There's a line drive to center. Bernard is there. Serha will make the hold it first. The throw back, and BJ is back in plenty of time. Here's Bronia. 265, a homer, and four RBI. There's a looper that's going to be. Did Bernard count it? Yes, he did. Bernard made a nice catch. One of those lazy line drives. And there's two out for Baco. At 138, a homer. And three, RBI. Gardner deals. And there's a ground ball to Aurelia. He goes to first to Snow. And Paul, having the speed of me, is retired. No runs, a hit, no errors. We go to the third in Atlanta, two, nothing Giants. So, opening nine for Maddox, 43 pitches. Two innings, two hits, two runs, two walks, and two strikeouts. I'm going to try something here. Hold on. Well, you know, welcome to, welcome to Retro Sports Network, Mr. Gardner. It's amazing that you can talk to me and pitch in this game at the same time. Well, that's what I do. I can be two places at once. You can be two places at once. So Bernard is up. Marvin is singled and scored. And so Mr. Gardner is not pitching as Maddox gets the strikeout, a 2-2 changeup right down Broadway. Dave, tell him what you're doing right now. Is this a playoff game or the end of their regular season? I think they're wrapping up the regular season. So for those of you who don't know what Dave does, explain who the Cyclones are. Let me get this at-bat done. Aurelia hit the home run to left center in the first to make a 2 nothing San Francisco. So for those who don't follow Dave or don't know what he does in one of his real jobs, he'll tell you as soon as Aurelia hits a fly ball to left, Suroff moving over, two out. So go ahead. The Cyclones are a junior hockey team in New Hampshire that I do play-by-play -play for. And they got three different levels of teams, and I do play-by-play -play for all of them from time to time. And uh, this is one of those times. And so this is, I, I wouldn't, if for those of you who are watching from Canada, Barry Bonds, by the way, walked his first time up. Pitch from Maddox. Ground ball to Varys. Nice stop by QVO over to first to get Barry. So, I believe we are done with the inning. Yep, no runs, no hits, no errors. Bottom of the third, 2 nothing San Francisco. So, although it's considered junior hockey, for our friends who might be watching in Canada, it really isn't the same level, but what would you equate the top level to? Uh, boy, at the top level is probably pretty close to D3 college. Okay, and that's what you do at Riviera College up in Nashua, right? 
Yep, that's the college there. And I just got hired to do some playoffs for, uh, I think it's another college league uh, coming up in a couple weeks. So. so Dave is moving on up in the world. And so you can say you remember when. <laughs> there. So as Greg Maddox steps up, yep, Do a.k.a. Jack Dave, not Don. Jack Edwards. Someone else. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd let you do play by play, but I know you can't see it. Maddox, four for 16 on the replay with no homers and no RBI. Gardner's pitch. There's a line drive left center field for a base hit. Auto correct, I'm being told. That's okay. So, anything else you'd like to add? I know that I've interrupted some of your streams before, but I figured since. It's set that whatever you sent to me on Facebook popped up on the screen that I would embarrass you by calling you. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't even know you were going on today. I, I, I got to subscribe to the channel so I know when you're on, you know? Yeah, how you doing, yeah, no. Big Dave? No, I mean, it's one of those things I had it muted on the other computer, and I haven't muted it yet here. Thankfully, you didn't say too much. We're trying to get groceries delivered at <laughs> at the same time, so that's why you, you know got... Hey, food is food. Food is food, okay? <laughs> I got to head in. They're dropping a puck in 20 minutes, and I got to get the lineup. So All right. I actually got to go to work. I really do have to go to work. But it's good talking to you and um, and, and say hi to the, the people watching the game. And, um, yeah, that's that. All right. So, Dave Gardner, thanks a bunch. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> so, Dave, going to do is... Junior hockey game for real. Varis is 0 for 1. Gardner, 41 for his opening. Nine, two innings plus two hits and a walk. Maddox on first. 2 nothing. bottom of the third, San Francisco. Varis goes the opposite way, but that's going to hook foul. And Maddox has to make the long run back to... No, as a catch. Now, Bonds didn't move on the chalkboard. So it was in foul territory... But a catch. So one out for Andrew Jones, who's 0 for 1. Hope you guys are having a good Friday afternoon. Struck him out. Gardner got him to chase a 2-2 curve. That'll bring up Chipper. Larry walked his first tub up. Chopper to Kent. Jeff goes to first, and that will retire the side. So Maddox is stranded after three. No runs, a hit, no errors. San Francisco two, Atlanta nothing. So Kent, Rios, and Santiago. I see that smiley face there, Mike. Did you get your yard work done yesterday? Jeff struck out his first time up. Maddox has settled down after a off first. In the left, Serhoff, one out. It is 14 here in Burlington. I did. You need more propane for the grill. I have a pronoun and a noun for you, my friend. Wind chill. Alexa, what's the wind chill right now? Currently, the wind chill is 0 degrees Fahrenheit. Tonight, expect it'll feel like minus 9 degrees. I hope that made you cold. Rios has struck out his first time up. He's 0 for 1. Fly ball, right field. Jordan will make the catch. Two out for Benito Santiago, who's 0 for 1. I hope you do tofu on the grill and it sticks. Maddox delivers. There's a slow ground ball over the mound for calls. Got to hurry over to Bronya. And Santiago is out on the bang banger. That will retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. And I hope people realize I'm joking. I'm glad that it's warm where he is. Midlife crisis, 25 months. How about that? Uh, checked in, but no, we were a little bit late trying to coordinate groceries and stuff, so I went on at 12.15. So, yeah, so a rare Friday baseball game. 
Mike, Mike says we have a backyard basketball court, and I've ordered some lights for it. You need to post some pictures when you do that, because that's pretty cool. The lights arrive, so I'll be busy trying to get those to work. Yeah, show that off. All your kids are basketball players, right? Anyway, so as we get so as we talk about that, here are the standings as we play the middle of the fourth. The Marlins, again, kind of like fruit on the bottom of a yogurt cup. They're going the wrong way. Three, they've lost seven to ten. They lead the Phillies by two. The Mets by two and a half. The Braves are just four back. They've won seven to ten. In the central, the Reds have reignited themselves. They've won five straight and six of ten. They lead Houston by a game and a half. St. Louis and Milwaukee, two and a half back. And John, don't forget, if there's something, if I promise to stream at Time X, and it's not going to be there, the Facebook group is where I put those changes in. We just couldn't coordinate everything. San Francisco is tied for first in the West with Colorado at twenty-five and fifteen. Now, are you the only one in your family that watches these streams? So, and San Diego and Arizona are four back. And the Dodgers are just five and a half back. In the American League East, the Yankees lead the Red Sox by a game and a half. The Blue Jays have lost 11 straight. In the Central, Cleveland has found that upper gear. They lead the White Sox by three games. Not that the White Sox are playing poorly, although they've lost their last four. But the Indians are now 27 and 11. That's 19. 19.54 pays for those. Yeah. <laughs> Don't roll your eyes at me there, John. And in the West, Seattle, 28 and 12. They've won 9 of 10, 6 straight. Anaheim has won 5 straight. And they are still. Nine games back. Brian Jordan is 0 for 1. There's a ground ball right side, and Rios can't make the play. Will Jordan go for two? He will. That hit off the heel of Rios' glove after it bounced on the ground, and he ends up at second. So an error by Rios, and a single and an error. Now I'll bring up Sirhoff, who's one for one. Does BJ? No, BJ. I don't know why it's not showing it now. It's showing as a picture. He's with the Braves all year. Wonder if something changed in the game. Because I believe I that picture folder is where it should be. Here's Sirhoff. He singled his first time up. Ground ball to Kent. Jordan goes to third. Throw to Snow for the out. Since he didn't answer if his kids watch any of these streams, I will just say that, yes, it's the one sport all four have in common. Here's for call. Raphael is 0 for 1. Jordan on third. 2 nothing Giants. One out. Bottom the fourth. Base hit right center field. Cut off by Bernard. Jordan will score. Bernard misplays it, and Fur Call runs all the way to second. So for the second time in the inning, the Braves get a single and stretch it out on an error by an outfielder. First it was Rios, and then it was Bernard. Barry Bonds just kind of looking very sheepish and left. Here's Bronya, who's 0 for 1. So for call has great speed on second. And we're going to go. For calls tries to steal for third. The third down to Davis is not in time. And Raphael has his 11th steal of the year. <laughs> All right, I won't read the end of it then. <laughs> I won't read what you said. Ah. <laughs> oh. It's okay. He'll grow out of it. It's just a phase. That's what you just tell yourself. Bronia is 0 for 1, and the count is 0 and 1. Right back to Gardner for call. 
bluffs the throw to Snow, two out. No, another error on the play. Would you believe that? The Giants have made three errors in the inning. It was a decent throw by Gardner, but Snow bobbled it and dropped it. And because for call what didn't go, the Giants kind of catch a break. Runners on the corners, one out for Paul Bacco. And it's all coming undone in a hurry here for the Giants. So Gardner takes a deep breath. Runners on the corners. Bacco, this should be two. Davis. For call, sprinting home. Kemp for one. And the throw to first is not in time. And the game is tied at two. And so the Giant defense who have spent this inning playing the Keystone Cops, give up two unearned run. No, an unearned run for Maddox, who singled. Now, my father was a Yankee fan, and a lot of his relatives were and are Yankee fans. And that's one of the reasons I became a Red Sox fan, was to spite him. Maddox singled his first time up. Mike watched for call play in the minors at Myrtle Beach. Hey, well, you always had a gun for an arm. But, yeah, sometimes a bit wild. It is when it's hard like that. Maddox hits a ground ball to Davis. And for the Giants, is this inning over? It is. But well, what a bad inning. The Bad News Bears commit three errors. Two runs on two hits, and we go to the fifth. We're tied at two. So Snow, Davis, and Gardner to face Maddox here in the fifth. And JT draws the walk. This has not been a great outing for Maddox. It's his third walk. He only walked 27 in 233 innings. Mike's dad says, My father hates the Yankees. Okay. And Mickey Mantle. I've never heard of anyone who hated Mickey Mantle before. And you grew up in Rochester, New York. So, hmm. Explain that one. Did any player that anyone says is the next Willie Mays? That's kind of like my rooting interest in college football. Pitch to Davis, who's 0 for 1. Struck him out. Got him to chase a 2 2 changeup. One out for Gardner. Bronia and Jones play for the bunt. He grew up in Syracuse, arguing, arguing with kids about Mays versus Mantle. Yeah, but he didn't get did he, did he get into any arguments about Danny Shays and Hal Greer. So anyway, that argument sounds like mine for college football. I root for Michigan and anyone who plays Notre Dame and Ohio State. Gardner stays in the game, squares. Bacco has it, throws to Varis, covering. Sacrifice bunt goes down, 2-4, two, 2 out for Snow. Your dad's other hero was Dolph Shays, and if you didn't get the Syracuse part of it, that's where the Philadelphia 76ers played for a long time. They were the Syracuse Nats. So Maddox, 18 batters, 78 pitches, four and two-thirds, two hits, the home run to Aurelia, three walks and four strikeouts. Bernard, one for two, he is singled and struck out. Got him, and that's the inning, halfway home on a Friday, 2-2. Two -two. If we join us late, here's... Where the hell have you been? I like that. You join us late, here's how we got here. 
Uh, Rich Aurelia, a two-run homer in the third to make it 2-0 San Francisco. In the fourth, in one of those rare errors where everything went wrong for the Giants, Raphael for a call hit a single and then was given an extra base on an error to make it 2-1 San Francisco. And then Paul Bacco with a rare RBI to make it 2-1 on a, or 2-2 on a fielder's choice. So Mark Gardner, a four-hitter through four, just one of those runs has earned. He's walked and struck out one. Greg Maddox, five innings, two hits, two runs, both earned. And the homer to Aurelia, he's walked three and struck out five. 74 pitches for Mark through 18 batters. And I think I gave you the rest of it. Willie Mays, Jimmy Brown, Ernie Davis, and Dolph Shays. Three of the four played in Syracuse. Your dad's Mount Rushmore of heroes. Pitch to Varis. Fly ball right field in the corner. And Rios makes the catch one out. Assuming that your dad is right around the age that my dad would be, then he probably... Got, unless, I wonder if he grew up watching the Giants on Sunday or the Browns. Here's Jones. Andrew Jones is 0 for 2 with the strikeout. Fly ball left field. Bonds moving over. Makes the catch. Two out for Jones. Chipper is 0 for 1 with a walk. Guardy delivers. Long gone. Oh, my goodness. Someone up in the Budweiser beer tent area has that for a souvenir, and the Braves go up 3-2. to two. Chipper just smoked that one for his eighth of the year. An absolute no-doubter, Rios gave a half-hearted chase before he turned and watched it go. Wow, so 3-2 on that big home run. Here's Jordan, Brian, one for two. He is singled and scored. Browns, okay, he was born in 46, so he be, he's a little older than my dad would be. Lives in Arizona now and comes to stay in South Carolina in the spring. Got him! So that will retire the side. Greg Maddox has been given the lead on a solo homer by Chipper Jones. One run, one hit, no errors. After five, three, two Braves. So here's Aurelia. He hit his third in the first. One for two. Is now driven in 12. Maddox starts the frame with a ground ball to Bronia. One out. For Barry Bonds, Barry is 0 for 1 with a walk. So who is Will's favorite player? Fly ball, right center field. Back goes Jones and Jordan, and that ball is gone. Oh, did Barry get a B12 squirt on that one? His 16th of the year, and that is a Ballantine blast. How you doing, John? The right center. 402 feet. He crushed it. Aaron Judge, that's not bad. And do you tell him if you just keep eating those vitamin B12 squares, he won't be as big as Aaron? <laughs> Jeff Ken is 0 for 2. Yeah, you can't dislike Judge. You really can't. Even I like Aaron Judge. I really want him to sign with the Mets just to make my Yankee friend suffer, but I'm delighted he's staying. Pitch to Kent now in a 3-3 tie. Ground ball to Varis. Over to first for the out. Two out for Rios, who's 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Ooh. 
Little chopper to Fur Call, and Raphael throws over, and that will retire the side. So the Giants get a solo homer from Barry Bonds. Chad Zerby coming in to pitch. Got a pitching change after five and a half, 3 3. Zerby making his eighth appearance. He's 29 years old. Fastball pitcher at 87 and a ground ball plus pitcher. Did you tell him the Red Sox don't even re-sign their own stars? Last pitched on the 13th, so five days ago, against the Mets. An 11-7 win, which he got the win. Six innings, 78 pitches. Five hits, two runs, both earned a walk and two strikeouts. Zerby, 14 innings, 13 hits. Four runs, four earned, two walks, and four strikeouts. <laughs> you did. John DJ John says, I have a dilemma. He's, he's flying out to Hawaii tomorrow. Why is that a dilemma? Because his track cards are set to arrive later that day. I'm sure your wife would be thrilled to pieces to change the time on your flight to get your strat cards. Now, 76, 22, strat black, what'd you order? BJ Serhoff is one for two. Zerby, ground ball to Kent, one out. So Zerby now with, becomes the pitcher of record. Here's for call. Raphael, one for two. Uh, reached on a single and an error. Stole a base, scored. And drove in his 15th run. 3-3, bottom of the 6th. Ground ball to Kent. And that's a harder throw to Snow. And that's another error for the Giants. The throw was high. And that's going to be on Kent. And for call with good speeds on first. Yeah, rough life for John to be going to Hawaii. So here's Bronia, who's old for 2. For call is good speed. And let's see what Zerby does here. 76 and 22. On your anniversary. On your second one. John, those cards will be waiting for you when you get back. Throw to first for call is back. Bronia should be two. Zerby, Kent for one. Snow for two. So it's a one, four, three double play. And we go to the seventh. No runs, no hits, and the air does not hurt. San Francisco's made four errors in this game. After 6 3 3. So Maddox probably in his last inning because he's due to bat second. Santiago, Snow, and Davis. In a 3-3 tie, Benito is 0 for 2. Right up the box for call. Behind the bag, one out. J.T. Snow has walked twice. This isn't vintage Maddox. Not terrible Maddox, but it's not vintage. Got him. That's 6. An 0-2 changeup on the outside part of the plate. Brings up Russ Davis. Maddox might get another inning because of that. We'll see when this pitch count is. Russ is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. And Ramon E. Martinez. Well, pinch hit. Ramon, not there for picture day at 282. No homers and 4 RBI. 1 for 7 as a pinch hitter. That's a weird, I don't know what the heck that was. I think it hit the mound. No, it's off the foot of Maddox. Who boots that into right field. So Maddox walks around. He didn't know he was about to do an Adam Vinatieri impression out there. Goodness gracious. So Maddox waits to see what the Giants are going to do with Zerby. Greg says he's fine. That's only the fourth hit for the Giants, by the way. Two outs in the seven. 
Eric Davis is going to pinch hit. Davis, as a pinch hitter, hitting 063. Overall, 113, no homers, and two RBI. To third, Jones goes to Varis, and it's stretch time and a 3 3 tie. Somewhere, Theo Epstein is watching this game, and Alan Embry's 12.46 earned run average, and go, you know what? Someday I'm going to be a GM for the Boston Red Sox, and I want Embry in that 12.46 earned run average on my roster. Big Dave says, and John should know the answer to this, depending on the delivery service, one says to the mailman, you should be able to contact them, again, saying this to the mailman, and have it held or shipped differently. And, of course, our congratulations on your second anniversary. My 25th is in August. And no successful homicides. Embry last faced um, the Marlins last night, a third of an inning. Seven pitches and a hit down in Miami. 13 innings overall. He's 1-0 oh with a save. 21 hits. 18 runs all earned. He's given up eight homers. And as a graduate of the Brad Radke School of Pitching with those numbers, he has walked five and struck out 19. He's on the hook. We'll let Baco hit because we're going to pinch hit for Maddox. Got him. An 0-2 fastball. Looked at for strike three. Who can hit a lefty? Bernard Gilkey gets the call for the Braves. 167 as a pinch hitter, 167 overall, with no homers or RBI. Those stats and Embry doesn't have to face Bonds, that's true. <laughs> yeah. He was such a big part of that 2004 Red Sox team, too. Pitch to Gilkey is a base hit in the right center field. Rios throws it right back in, and the go-ahead run is on. Mike says, my anniversary is in July. We purposely picked the day after the All-Star game, which is always the slowest day of the year for sports every year. Your wife's a darling. Your wife didn't want you distracted. On the day I got married, Mark McGuire hit a home run. And I watched it from my hotel room before we went out for the evening. It was very nice for, for Mark to do that. Varis is 0 for 3, by the way. One out, bottom of the seventh. 3-3 three, three the score. Varis lines this one in the left foul. And somebody wearing a green jacket from Augusta, Georgia makes that catch. Two and two the count to Varis. Embry's pitch. Right back to Embry. Kent for one. And the throw will be late. And so it's a sack or fielder's choice. One four. Two out for Andrew Jones, who's 0 for three. Base hit left field. Bonds will pick it up. Careful, Barry. They've all made errors. Varus isn't going to stop at second. And his runners on the corners, two out. Knowing that John does a lot of weddings and such for his second job, I would think that getting your own business out of the way in the slow season would be the way to do that.
The Red Sox were enjoying chicken and beer much of your first few months of marriage. So it's Josh Beckett's fault, huh? First and third, two out for Chipper, who homered his last time up. He now has eight on a year and has driven in 27. Embry deals. Jones into center field. Bernard it drops the rain, makes the catch. And after seven, no runs, two hits. They leave on two. 3-3 three, three the score. So Maddox's day is done. Lefty, righty, lefty. Yeah, slower season there as well. Ramlinger will come in for Gilkey and Maddox. Mike, a 2-5 and five with a save and an earned run average of 7. Making his 21st appearance, 35 years old. Needs from just just for men in that beard. Fastball at 92 and a ground ball plus pitcher. Last pitched against the Rockies two nights ago in a 6-5 win. In fact, got the win. An inning, 26 pitches, a hit, a walk, and two strikeouts. 18 innings for Mike, 28 hits, 14 runs, all earned. Five homers. He has walked nine while striking out 21. And that 7 ERA is his best in about a month. Bernard, Aurelia, and Bonds to face him in the eighth. Dave's wife and himself got married the week before your rugby season. Really? You played rugby, huh? So all your friends had no excuse to skip it. Was that a Genesee League pitch? To Pedro Feliz will pinch hit. Pedro at 256, hitting 250 with two RBIs, a pinch hitter with a homer and five RBI overall. John's first marriage was the weekend before between the conference championships and the Super Bowl. Never get married during the Pro Bowl, okay? That's just the height of football greatness there. Pitch to Feliz. Here's a liner and a sinking in the left. Sir Hoff will grab it off a hop. And the go-ahead run is on with nobody out here in the eighth. Here's Aurelia. He homered to right in the first to make it 2 nothing San Francisco. Only the fifth hit for the Giants. Three runs, five hits, four errors. For San Francisco, they've left on three. Three runs, seven hits, no errors, and the Braves have left on six. Good advice here from Michael. You don't get married in the fall down south. College football is too important. Nobody will come. I highly recommend... <laughs> I highly recommend you get married on a Florida-Georgia weekend. Maybe Alabama-Auburn. No one's watching those games at all. Big Dave says, as I tell my friends, your second marriage is the one that counts. My wife of almost 25 years would be thrilled to hear that. In fact, she says, would tell you, who's he going to marry? The answer is her, of course. Pitcher, pitch to Aurelia. This might be two. Chipper's got it. Over to Varys for one. Spins and will throw it late. But they get Feliz at second on the 5-4 fielder's choice. One out for Barnes. Barry has homered his 16th. Has now driven in 29. Watt in his one for two. Remlinger takes a deep breath. That's a liner right through the middle. And Jones will pick it up. Andrew in center field. So first and second. One out for Jeff Kent who is 0 for 3 with a strikeout. So Aurelia on second, Bonds on first, Rios on deck. And Remlinger showing why that ERA is right around 7. Popped up for call. Running out of real estate, making a long run. Makes the catch in foul territory, two out. Brings up Armando Rios, who is 0 for 3 with a strikeout. So two out here in the top of the eighth. Fly ball, right field. Jordan 
will make the catch and they will leave on to Felix Rodriguez coming in to pitch. It is San Francisco three, Atlanta three. So still a warm night here in Hotlanta, 75 degrees. Still raining, but it really hasn't made much of a difference. Winds blowing in from right center at 7. Felix, making his 18th appearance of the year, has no record. And an earned run average of 174. He is 28 years old, fastball at 94, and a ground ball plus pitcher. Pitched last night in Florida's 9-2 drubbing of the Giants. Two innings, 25 pitches, a hit, and two strikeouts. 20 and two-thirds, 12 hits, five runs, four earned. He's yet to give up a homer. He has walked seven while striking out 27. And Jordan Serhoff and for call, the bat here for Atlanta. Brian is one for three. Singled, scored, and struck out. Mike's friend got married on a Saturday of the Georgia-South Carolina rivalry game back when um, we, South Carolina, was, were ranked eighth. I explained to my wife, I don't think I can be friends with this couple. Luckily, the reception had a big TV. <laughs> you weren't an SEC fan when you grew up in New York. Who'd you watch then? Syracuse? Bitch to Jordan. Got him. A full count fastball swung on and missed. One out. For Sir Hoff. BJ is one for three. He has singled. To Kent. Two out. So the Giants have tried their best to give this game away. They have committed four errors. Here's Raphael for call. One for three. He has a single, an RBI, a run scored, and a stolen base. Popped up. Right side. Snow. Out of play. And the count is two and two. Somebody from Marietta made that catch. Biggie's basketball. Same here. I was the greatest scout team quarterback in Gamecock history, though. <laughs> Is that where you went with South Carolina? Then you really can call them we if that's your school. For call, 2-2 two -two pitch. Got him! No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the 9, 3-3. Three, three. So Remlinger will start the inning. Santiago isn't going to do much here. He's 0-3. for 3. And he walked him. And now the logic of Ron Juckett's managing. Brought to you by DigitalDice.com. So that'll do it for Remlinger. Goodness, who do I go with? I want to save Leitenberg if I need a save. So we'll go to Barbie and John Rocker. And do I want to do a double switch? We'll yank BJ Serhoff. Class of 97. Came down. Oh, by the way. Oh, that was fun last Saturday, wasn't it? We had a great time. Somehow, Mr. Mike, you got your degree in education. Davey Martinez, by the way, a four and a six and left and will bat ninth. That was fun, wasn't it? JT Snow is 0 for 1. He has walked twice and struck out. So I take it you are a hot to trot quarterback in upstate New York then. I did not know that. Popped up. Varis. It's a rainmaker. Two out. Or one out for Ramon Martinez. Who singled his first time up. Ball four. Rocker lost that one. A 3-0 fastball high. So pinch hit time for the Giants. 
No, he stays in the game and strikes out. So two out. Wow, he did not have an at bat. I expected them to punt, pinch hit him. Are they out? Oh, they're down to two catchers. That's why. You were overrated. <laughs> Here's Dunstan, who's now the new center fielder. Sean at 311, a homer and five RBI. Two out top of the ninth in the 3 3 game. Got him, and that will retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. Bottom of the ninth coming up. It is 3 3. Well, let's get you caught up on some of the changes here. Dunstan, a 5 and a 7 in center. Martinez is a 4 at third. And Rob Nan, the giant closer coming in, he's a 2. With a 1,000 fielding percentage. 19th appearance for Rob. He is 1-0 and oh with 11 saves. And an earn run average of 0.47. He last pitched against Florida on the 15th, where he got the save in a 4-1 win. One inning, 13 pitches, and a strikeout. Well, maybe football-wise it was a bad recruiting decision, but unless you got your teaching certificate elsewhere, South Carolina gained a good one, I'm sure. 19 and a third for Rob, 10 hits, a run it was earned. He walked seven and struck out 21. So anyone is a winning run here. Bronia is 0 for 3. He's grounded into a double play. Ground ball to Kent. Jeff throws the first one out. Baco. You're going to pinch it? We'll just make this real easy and bring in Javi Lopez at 246, two homers, and 13 RBI. Graves in the rain trying to walk this one off in a 3-3 tie. Nope, ground ball to short, Aurelia. Are we going to have another extra inning game? Here's Davey Martinez. 250, a homer and three RBI. And then Roxon deals. Base hit, left center field. Bonds will pick it up. The Giants' defense has not covered themselves in clover. And with the winning run on, here's Varis. QVO is 0 for 4. But I don't think I've gone back up in. I could go with Lockhart. No, I'm not going to go with Lockhart. So this is the Braves' best option in the 10th for San Francisco, Aurelia Bonds and Kent. Base hit left center field. Dunstan will pick it up. And Martinez is going to try for third. Dunstan caught napping, and the throw is not in time. In fact, they even throw it to get cut off. So two out, and the winning run is 90 feet away. For Andrew Jones, who was one for four with a strikeout. So everybody's up on their feet now. Nen takes a deep breath. Here's the pitch. In the left center, Dunstan should get there. And it's free baseball on a Friday. A diving stop. And we go to the 10th, 3-3. Johnny Antonelli, the pride of Rochester, New York. A three-hit shutout in Pesky Poles PC replay replay to beat those fighting Phils 3-0. Avi Lopez stays in the game. He's a three, six and a three behind the plate for Aurelia. One for four with that two-run homer in the first. You guys might know, why did um, Maddox dislike Lopez behind the plate? Pitch to Aurelia. In the right, Jordan. One out. For Barry Bonds. 
Lefty versus lefty. Barry, a home run. He now has 16. Two for three. He has singled and walked as well. Got him! A full count curve. Because Lopez didn't care about catching, just hitting. That would make sense. I mean, Maddox is a professor out there. If you missed the conversation at the beginning, I was asked by Dog Day Dice, who would I take? Maddox or Pedro? Here's Ken. He's 0 for 4 with a strikeout. And I answered it for a career, I would take Maddox. But at the peak, Pedro. No question about it. It's not that Pedro was ever a bad pitcher. It was that Maddox just dominated his entire career. Pitch to Kent. Little ground ball to third. Chipper's got a hurry. Long throw over to Bronya. And the side is retired. So the Bro Giants go quietly in the 10th. No runs, no hits, no errors. After nine and a half, 3-3. Three, three. So it'll be Chipper, Jordan, and the pitcher spot. It's a good argument for Pedro. You're taking the guy who misses more bats. That's why Maddox wasn't as good in the playoffs. I also think that they won their division so easy some years. This was, I remember this happening with Dusty Baker, the year I covered the Nationals. If you go and play, let's do Chipper's at bat. Struck him out. 0 2 curveball swung on and missed. If you win the division in early or mid September, you're taking your foot off the throttle because that's just human nature to get people at bats and to rest people up. The hardest thing to do is to put your foot back on the gas in any sport once you've taken it off. And I think that happened a lot with the Braves. Here's Jordan, one for four. Brian has singled and scored. Yeah. And remember, a lot of those years, the Braves has dominated. There's a looper in the left. And Bonds is there, two out. Especially when the Braves moved into this place. It was two years off their World Series win. And I think, unlike... The launching pad, in the, which is now the parking lot, I think the Braves, for the first few years, had a tremendous home field advantage at Turner. He will pinch hit for Rocker. Wes Helms at 177, three homers and 10 RBI. As a pinch hitter, he has a homer, two RBI, and hit 300. 93 we talked about. No wild cards. Giants and the Braves right down to the wire. Pitch to Helms. Fly ball left field. Back goes Barnes. Way back there. Braves win it. Walk off Homer West Helms. Chief Nakahoma is dancing in the streets. The Braves have walked this one off. Four, three. So in three hours and 40 simulated minutes, the Braves win this one. Four to three. Four runs, 10 hits. Eight left on for Atlanta. Wes Helms is our digital dice player of the game. San Francisco, the errors were costly. Three runs, six hits, four errors. And they leave on seven. Nen takes a hard luck loss. Rocker gets the win. Thank you, Bernie. Two innings, a walk, and three strikeouts. Maddox, seven innings, four hits. Three runs all earned. Two homers. He walked three and struck out six. Mark Gardner, five innings, five hits. Three runs, two earned. A homer, the chipper. A walk and two strikeouts. Bullpen did its job. But the Braves get a biggie. Four to three. They are now nineteen and twenty-three. San Francisco twenty-five and sixteen. And before we go, we will let you look at the stat all the stats for a second. 
and then play the games on this Friday night. May 18th, 2001, the Cubs shut out the Diamondbacks. 4-1, John Lieber beats Randy Johnson. Really? Lieber 4-1, Johnson 6-2, Sammy Sosa, Sosa is 8th of the year, 1-3. for three. Phils beat the Cardinals 3-2. Omar Dahl gets the win. Alan Bennis takes a loss, Dahl 1-5. Drew 2-3 for three with two triples. Dodgers beat the Mets 2-1. Kevin Brown 3-3, three three. Al Leiter 1-3. Sean Green 2-3 for three with a triple. In 10, Vladdy Guerrero, 3 for 5, 5 RBIs, his 14th of the year. Expos beat the Padres, 8 to 7. Peters, 1 and 5. Lee, 0 and 1. Marlins beat the Rockies, 3 2. A.J. Burnett goes to 2 and 1. Pedro Estacio falls to 3 and 4. Alfonseca, his 10th save. Detroit beats Tampa, 6 4 and 14. Murray, 1 and 3. Esteban Yan falls to 0 and 3. Debbie Cruz, his first of the year, drives in 3. 16 hits for Baltimore. As they pound the Twins, 16 to 4. Johnson, 3 and 6. Eric Milton falls to 0 and 8. Guzman, 3 for 5. Two homers. He now has hit, has hit 6. Drives in 2. Lance Berkman, 3 for 4. 5 RBI, 11 home runs. As Bottenfeld gets the win in an 11-3 drubbing of Cincinnati, Fernandez falls a 2-5. Toronto 8-2 over Texas, Carpenter 4-3, Crabtree 0-1, Gonzalez 2-5 for five, is fourth of the year and drives in three. Red Sox 8-2 over Kansas City, Pedro Martinez goes to 5-1, Stein 3-1, Carl Everett, Remember, he had the walk-off earlier this week. Two for three in his eighth of the year and drives in three. By the way, in that Cub win, have I read that yet? I must have, yeah. A lever of four-hitter with seven strikeouts. Gi uh, Giants committed four errors in my game. Uh, Yankees pound out 16 hits, beat Seattle eight to four. That's tomorrow. Uh, that's Tuesday's game. Mendoza, six and oh. Franklin, one and two. Justice, two for four, his fifth of the year and drives in two. Oakland beat Chicago 5 to 4. Gil Heredia gets another win. How about that? 2 and 1. Kip Wells 2 and 2. Jose Valentin is 10th. He's 2 for 4. And Anaheim beats Cleveland 11 8. Pat Rep 4 and 5. Steve Carse 2 and 1. Ellis Burks is 3rd of the year. He is 3 for 5 with 2 RBI. Tuesday, we got for you the Yankees and the Mariners. Wednesday at lunch. San Francisco and Arizona. And Thursday at lunch, Colorado at San Francisco. So NL West, NL West action coming up. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll talk to you in digital at to dice sometime over the next 48 hours. Until then, be safe, and we'll see you Tuesday night for more baseball. So long, everybody.